Good morning, Prayer Warriors. This is Prayer Warriors 365, Armor Up AM. My name is Regina M. Dick with Good News Broadcasting and Multimedia. And today we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare, specifically about the nature of spiritual warfare, especially in these days. So first let's go to the Bible, Matthew 24, 8. It says, For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. In various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all of these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. Now, as we look at our events that are happening today in our world, we're beginning to see events coming closer and closer together. And in Mark 13, 8, it says, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and famines. These are the beginning of the birth pains. And we've been experiencing these birth pains. And the thing about birth pains, they start to become closer and closer together till the final event. And that's exactly what we're experiencing today. Famines, earthquakes, wars, pestilence geopolitical events that are shaking our world today and it seems to be increasing in intensity and also in the time between in other words just like birth pains of a woman so as believers in Jesus Christ what is our part and what do we do we are connected with our the Most High God we are his children we are heirs and co-heirs with Jesus Christ as believers so First and foremost, we need to kind of get an idea of who we are and what we are fighting. As true believers in Christ, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, discerning through the Bible, there are three major factors that give us evidence to these days and in times. Number one, we know from Scripture, after Scripture in the Bible, that these things are experienced these things that we're experiencing are to come to pass. We've been told by generation after generation of believers who, while they saw some signs in their times, they never in the history of mankind experienced the frequency or the intensity of events on a global level coming together like pieces of a puzzle coming together or like a woman's labor pains getting closer and closer until the final event. The second thing, neither did we have the global connection that we have as a result of major technological advances, computers, internet, television, real-time global communications, specifically the internet. With the internet we can communicate real-time and we can cross the language barriers like in Babel, when God separated man by language, we are coming together by technology to be able to speak one language. So this is what's happening in our world that is showing us that technology has bringing, is bringing things together. Number three, and the most profound difference with our particular generation is not only the prolific unfolding of Bible prophecy, but specific events taking place with God's chosen people, Israel, that has been called God's timepiece. However, as Christians, true believers, we are to be ready or armored up for spiritual warfare like never before. The question is, what exactly is spiritual warfare, and how do we fight? So let's begin by talking briefly about the nature of spiritual warfare. In Wikipedia, it says a spiritual warfare. It says spiritual warfare is the Christian version of the concept of taking a stand against supernatural evil forces. The foundation of this ideology is having a belief in evil spirits which are able to intervene in human affairs. Various Christian groups have adopted practices to repel such forces as based on their doctrine of Christian demonology. A common form of spiritual warfare 
among Christians is prayer. Other practices may include exorcism, laying on of hands, fasting, or anointing with oil. And if you'll notice, it says some of the common forms of spiritual warfare among Christians is prayer. That's what we do. We are prayer warriors. And the reason why we are armoring up is so that we're not shaken as things happen more with more intensity, with more frequency, that we keep our steady, firm footing in Jesus Christ, a rock. But we have to have that connection. We hear, again, the shepherd's voice. He knows us, we know him, and we stay firm in faith each and every day. Mainstream Christianity typically acknowledge a belief in the reality or the ontological existence of demons, fallen angels, the devil in Christianity, and Satan. In Christian evangelism, doctrines of demonology are influenced by interpretations of the New Testament, namely with the Gospels, in that dealing with spirits became a customary activity in Jesus' ministry. Mark states that he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Evangelical Christian tradition believe that Satan and his minions exercise significant influence over the world and its power structures. A hostile realm in conflict with the kingdom of God is recorded in the Bible by the Apostle John. The whole world is under the control of the evil one, 1 John 5, 19. And by Jesus, who referred to Satan as the prince of this world, John 12, 31, 14, 30, and 16, 11, which may point to the concept of territorial spirits. Paul elaborates on demonic hierarchy in Ephesians 6 where he also mentions, by way of metaphor, those qualities needed to, for defense against them. Two of these articles, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, were lifted from the book of Isaiah. It is also believed that Satan occupies a temporal existence, when the Apostle Paul refers to him as the God of this age. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. Further, Paul's epistles focus on the victory of Christ over the principalities and powers. Evangelical interpretation has history divided into two eras, the present evil age and the age to come, which support the concept of the second coming of Christ. Imagery of spiritual warfare is displayed in the book of Revelations, when after the war in heaven, Revelations 12, 7, the beast and kings of the earth wage war against God's people, Revelation 19, 19, and a final battle ensues with Satan and the nations of the earth against God himself, Revelation 28. So we're kind of going to kind of step into getting an idea of what spiritual warfare is, the nature of spiritual warfare. So today, as you begin your prayer, your time with the Lord, open up your heart and ask Him to give you insight, to open your ears and your heart to understanding. Tomorrow we'll begin spiritual warfare on a personal level, but today just begin to think about the things that are going on because remember we walk in faith as believers not in fear and a lot of fear is going on right now a lot of confusion so we want to stand steady we want to stand in the rock we want to stand in the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth which is Jesus Christ so today in your alone time with the Lord simply be with him talk to him listen to him The main thing is to learn to hear his voice. And he'll speak. Don't know when, where, or how, but he will. So I want to encourage you. Spend that alone time with the Lord. If you want to look up 
spiritual warfare, please do. Do your own knowledge of what is out there, but also, most importantly, talk to the Lord. See what He has to say. Open your heart to the Holy Spirit in His leading and guiding. That is how we communicate. God will show you the way. He'll open. He'll put something in your path at the right time, at the right place, or questions you may have, or something that you're trying to figure out. So until tomorrow, spend time with the Lord, hear His voice, surrender to a teachable spirit, to the Holy Spirit. God bless. We are fighting the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ, one day at a time. God bless.